Welcome back, YouTube, to part three of our series where we are showing you how to get up and running with Python on the Windows operating system. All right, so important thing, in the last video, we showed you how to install Python on Windows. If you skip that video, do not even touch this video. Go watch that one first and make sure it's installed before you do this video. I'm gonna say that again, if it's not installed, you go watch that one first, then you come back to this one. All right, so what are we gonna do in this video? Well, now that we already have Python installed, remember how we said that a lot of times people kind of go in with the expectation that, oh, I just have to start typing some code and I'm good to go, right? Yeah, kind of. So there's actually a lot of other tools that we tend to use in tandem with our programming language of choice. The, probably the biggest and most important one is we have to get something to write our code. Now, we could technically use something like Word. You really could. You could technically write your code all on Word. You could use Notepad, whatever you want. The problem is, is those particular applications are not necessarily geared towards writing programs. And so we need things like syntax highlighting. We need things like maybe the capability to debug our code. And maybe we want the capability to install extensions so we can use different features from other tools in our current environment. And so it's not just sitting there and writing some code, but it's making sure you're using the right tool to write your code in. Now, there's many different tools out there to write code. There's Visual Studio, there's Visual Studio Code, there's PyCharm, there's Sublime, there's lots of choices. However, a very popular option is called Visual Studio Code. The reason why is it's a very lightweight application, so it's really easy to install. There's not a lot you have to kind of do during that installation process. And it's really customizable, so you can add extensions to do anything from changing the color of it to connecting to databases. So it's gotten really popular over the last few years just because it is so flexible, yet it's still so lightweight. It's, it's really an awesome tool. And most people, once they start using it, they kind of never go away from it. I mean, they use other tools, but it's just so easy to use. It's got a great user interface and they're constantly enhancing it. So it's a really good option. So we're gonna install Visual Studio Code. So if you don't already, open up an internet browser. I already have one open, so I'm just gonna take that existing one. And you can see this is from our previous video, so I'm gonna close that out, and I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. Close out this, close out that. And then I'm gonna type in Visual Studio Code. Look at that, pops right up. I'm gonna expand this. And then I'm gonna click my first option right here, Visual Studio Code, Code Editing Redefined. So people kind of get confused. Uh, they think Visual Studio Code is called something, something called an IDE, or short for Integrated Development Environment. It's not technically an IDE, it is technically a code editor, but a lot of times with all the extensions and everything, it kind of feels like an IDE. But with an IDE, you usually get some other features like code compilation and all sorts of other fancy stuff when it comes to working on more complex projects like web pages um, and just lots of different stuff. And so uh, with Visual Studio IDE, uh, it's heavier and it's a little bit more complex to install. Instead, Visual Studio Code, it's lightweight. It's just kind of a code editor that you can extend. So in this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see that there's this option for download for Windows. If you click this little arrow, you'll also see the different operating systems options. Now, a couple things to know when you do install an application. Sometimes uh, the application offers you different uh, additions of it. And so there's a stable addition or a stable build, and that's the one that most people install. There's also what we call an insider edition. And so the insider edition often is working on the next new round of features. So where you might have new features that aren't generally released to everybody. The problem is, is normally when you're working on the insider's edition is there might be more bugs sometimes. And that's just because you're testing new features. And if you're testing new features, yeah, you're getting the latest and greatest, but it might always might not always be the most fine tuned yet. So most of the time you're gonna wanna do the stable build. In some situations, if you're like me, I like doing insider's edition, but it's important to know that if you do that, that you could you know experience some bugs here and there. 
In this situation, though, we'll do download the stable build. Alrighty, so we'll be redirected. I want to close out this page only because if you look here, there's a lot of tutorials. There's a whole section de dedicated to Python. I am not going to be naive about this. I know I can't cover every possible topic when it comes to using this tool. In fact, a lot of this stuff here, but um, I want to cover kind of the big important stuff. However, part of this is you kind of just have to understand you got to be willing to read through the documentation sometimes. So I will point out important resources if I think they're important. And that's basically something you should be bookmarking and saying, hey, I might not cover it in this video, but you, you should be going back and covering it because it's really important information. You can see here that it looks like everything got uh, downloaded successfully. So I'm just going to do open. I'm going to minimize this. And maybe it will pop up. Okay, so sometimes this pops up. Um, I have administrator privileges, so I, I just click OK. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, you probably won't get that because I'm assuming you're probably not running in administrator mode. So make sure you accept the agreement. Obviously, like anything, <laughs> you have to. You can install it, and then you can click Next. You can click Next. Stop here. Do not continue. Create a desktop icon, check this box, check this box, and check that box. Keep this box checked. These two, basically what they're gonna do is when you right click, you're gonna see an option called open with code. So that's really nice if you're in your file explorer and you wanna open up an entire folder in Visual Studio Code, uh, you can do it just like that. Super nice. Uh, this one just makes it where it supports other file types. So then you can click next. It's just giving you an overview before you install. So it's saying, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do these things. And you just do install. <clears throat> it's not too bad. I mean, it kind of goes pretty quickly, I find. I think that's kind of the interesting because like when I actually looked at the overall size of the files being installed, it was like only 300 megabytes, which I couldn't believe. I mean, that was remarkable. It's so like tiny. I mean, the extensions alone were like, <laughs> I had like extensions that got up to like one gigabyte. So once it's done, it's just going to say, hey, it looks like it was good. If you don't see this, then you might have encountered an error. And then if this box is checked, it's going to open it right after uh, you click this little finish button. So I don't mind if it opens it. I want it to open it. All right. So I'm going to close out of this one really quickly. And then I'm going to close this. And then uh, normally when you open it up, you're going to see this window, this is the main window. This is kind of the introduction window. I will warn you that they're actually <clears throat> in the process of changing this so that it actually might look different a few months after I record this video. The new experience is going to be a little bit more guided. So they'll show you like, hey, this is how you change your color theme. Hey, this is how you open a folder and stuff like that. So don't be surprised if this doesn't look identical at the time of this recording. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. <clears throat> but the first thing here is it's just basically saying, hey, do you want to open a new file? Do you want to open a folder? Or do you even want to clone a repository? So that's also uh, a thing too, is they've built a lot of source control features into Visual Studio Code. So you're going to find working with tools like Git, working with platforms like GitHub, it's going to be really easy. All right. Um, and then also tools, languages, and stuff like that. So we're going to kind of just give a high level overview about kind of just the different parts of Visual Studio Code. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail yet, just because you really don't want to do that until you're actually using that particular feature, because some of it will be a little bit over our head. So if you go down here, you're going to see this little settings or that little gear icon. This is where you can check for updates. You can actually sync your profile across different computers. Uh, keep in mind, it will install things like your extensions, change your color themes, and all sorts of fun stuff. It's not a bad thing. It's just one of those things. You just want to make sure you're aware of what it's doing. You can change your color theme, your file icon theme, product icon theme, and just some other stuff. <clears throat> There's also this option at the top called Command Palette. This is where you basically can call certain commands, and they will execute certain functions. So things like cloning, things like clearing, uh, reloading your window, checking for updates, you know, just all sorts of different stuff. And then settings too, if you need to change different settings on VS Code, you can access it from there as well. This one up here, this is your profile. So if you do have sync turned on, this is where you can sign into accounts. If you want to use that sync feature, you either need to have a Microsoft account or you need to have a GitHub account, one of those two. 
The next one right here, this little building block one, this is where you manage your instec ugh, manage your extensions. So extensions, like I said, they help extend the functionality of VS Code. I actually already have some installed. Now, the thing to keep in mind is even if you uninstall VS Code, it's not going to uninstall the extensions. You actually have to delete those manually, as I found. And so uh, one thing is I tested this video before and I actually installed some extensions. And these are the installations from that previous test run. So uh, if you actually look over this, you're probably not going to see these ones. But what you would do is if you wanted to install an extension, you would go up to your little search bar. You would type in, let's say Python, for example, and probably the first one that's going to be right here is going to be Python. And right now it says uninstall, but normally you're going to see this option for install. Now, if you want to make VS Code the font bigger, you can do Control plus and then Control plus and it makes bigger each time. Control minus makes it smaller. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just because I know I'm recording. But again, you're going to see an option for install. Once it's installed, you can disable it, which basically means turn it off, or you can actually uninstall it. So actually remove it from your system. So that's where you would see your extensions. And it's usually in three categories, installed, recommended. I think there's disabled and some other ones too. The next one up here is your run and debug pane. So this is where you can debug your code. Um, we'll be leveraging something called a launch.json file. So it basically tells uh, VS Code how to boot up your script and where to look for it and what are some things like maybe command line arguments and, and stuff like that. So again, very important pane. We'll be using that a lot. This is your source control pane. So right now you can't do anything with it because we don't have Git installed. You have to have Git installed in order to use the source control pane inside of VS Code. But with the source control pane, you can do things like clone repositories. You can uh, <clears throat> track changes to your files and all sorts of different stuff. Very important. We're going to be using this one a ton. Search. So if you want to search for certain keywords across a bunch of different folders, you can do that here. And you can also uh, replace uh, things that you search for. And you can specify how you want to search. Do you want to do match case? You want to match the whole word? Do you want to do a regular expression search? all sorts of different stuff. So a uh, good feature to have. I've used it before, especially when you have <laughs> folders that contain a bunch of files. And then this is your file explorer. So this is where you can explore folders that you open and stuff like that. So, so let's just say, for example, I want to open up one of my repositories. I will go to my OneDrive. I will go to my desktop. I will go to Sigma. Oh. Is this one up to date? It might be, I don't know. We'll see in a sec. So this is actually a repository I'm working on. So for those of you who use Power BI, uh, it's great because I've been writing some uh, library basically to use, <laughs> what is it, Power BI from Python. So uh, normally you might get a bunch of these kind of warnings saying like, hey, you don't have this installed, you don't have that installed. Uh, that's expected just because, again, I'm dealing, dealing with a fresh installation. Uh, we'll talk about it once we get there about how to install certain things and other stuff. But this is basically where you can explore your different folders and then your different files inside of those folders. So lots of good stuff here. And uh, so this is kind of your command bar, I guess. It's, I don't know if that's a proper term. Then this is your menu. So file, new file, new window. This one's kind of self-explanatory. The one thing I want to make sure you do is so on on a file, there's an option called auto save and by default it's off. I turn that off and that basically just means every time you change your file, it automatically saves it. And then you can do things like change your color theme as well. So you can say, hey, I want to do red. Ooh, look at that. That's nice and red. That's really red. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I don't know about that. Read me is all sorts of fun stuff. So you can do things and then um, edit, redo, undo, cut, copy, paste, kind of basic operation selection, you know, view. So again, you can change your view appearance. You can do all sorts of different stuff and customize the layout, explore. So this will basically take you to the different um, options here, problems, output. So this is kind of down here with your terminal. So if I do, uh, what is it, terminal? 
it brings up my terminal and then there's options here so I can see my problems, my output, when I'm debugging it, so I get here, I can access my command palette. I can do things like go to symbol and editor, go to file, you know, just different stuff. You know, it really, it's kind of one of those things, I don't tend to go up here a lot unless I'm looking for something specific. Start debugging, run without debugging, open configurations, add configuration, you know, lots of stuff. Terminal, new terminal, split terminal. So you can split your terminal, you can run task, run build task, all sorts of different stuff. And then help, you know, interactive playground if you need to do fancy stuff like check for updates, open the process explorer, you can do that as well. So good stuff in here. I can't say I use this stuff a ton, but it's good to know it's there. All right, so that's VS Code, but clearly we need to install something else because right now it's not installed. <clears throat> so if you actually go here from your source control pane and you click this one, it will actually take you to the website that you need to go to. So you can just go to open and then this will take you to get source control manager. And what you'll notice is that there's an option right here for downloading. So most of the time that's fine. Uh, again, I just want to kind of show you some other things before we download it. Uh, you'll notice that there's a Mac build, source code, tarballs, I don't know what that is, but there's also graphical user interfaces. So when you install Git, it's also going to install something called Git Bash. And basically that's like a command line application that allows you to use certain commands to do Git operations. And then when you install Git Bash, it also installs a graphical user interface, a GUI or GUI. And so that's a visual way to do these same operations. So um, <clears throat> by default, it will install Git Bash. I don't know if it's listed here. I think it should be. Okay, I guess it's not. Well, it will be installed. I can promise you that. Um, but there's also showing you other options as well. So some are free, some you have to pay. GitHub Desktop, I've used that before. That's a nice one as well. But I'm gonna go back and then I'll do download 2.31.1. And then again, you have a 32-bit option or a 64-bit 64 uh, 64 Git option. And then there's also portable, so thumb drive edition. So we're just gonna do the standard one. So 64-bit Git. You can see here, I will open it up. This one, they ask you a lot more questions. A lot more questions. So go next, next. <sighs> hold on. Oh, hold on, hold on. What is it again? Program files. Okay. I installed it before, so I have to delete it. So you do next. And then from here, I like having an icon on the desktop. True type font, eh, you can put that on if you want or not. And then check daily. I like to check for updates, that's just me. But everything else you can leave on. Uh, again, if you notice here, it's kind of hard to read, I'm sure, but get bash here, get GUI here. So it's actually installing some of that stuff. And then get uh, this one, just do next. You can leave it to the default. Like get decide, I don't like deciding myself, and then just do the recommended option. Uh, use the open SSL library, yep, just use that one. Do that one, do that one, use the default. Sure, use the new one, do the default. If you want experimental features, you can turn it on, I'm not, and then it's gonna install it. And I'm gonna take a drink. Feels so good. It doesn't take too long, but you know, you just want to make sure. And then anytime I like do anything that I know is going to be interacting with the command prompt or terminal, I actually close out any application that leverages it. So I'm going to close out VS Code uh, just because a lot of times when you're installing something like this, it's going to change system variables and things like that. And so a lot of those changes won't be picked up until you restart the application. So you can view the release notes. So those are basically just saying like, hey, these are the updates. And then if you want to launch it, uh, you just need to make sure this box is checked as well. And then do finish. <clears throat> and then you can see here, 
Uh, these are the latest changes. Most of them are just bug fixes, but you can also see um, they're using, I guess, later versions of certain other applications or features. And then this is Git Bash. So it's colored. That's probably the first thing people notice is like, oh, it looks very much like the terminal. Yeah, it is for the most part, but um, it's just a little bit different. So now you can do certain keywords like gets and you don't know what you're talking about. And you're like, oh, okay. Um, uh, one thing I do want to show you though, is like, so uh, one of the features is, you know, when I was talking about VS code or um, even just with Git is they add certain shortcut operations to your little, I guess like command bar or like, I don't know exactly what you officially call that. But if you go here, for example, you can do git GUI here. And when you do this, it will bring up the graphical user interface. And so you can actually see the code that goes in here. And so um, it's basically going to start loading it once they're downloaded and you can actually see the code that's inside of it and any change that you've made and all sorts of stuff like that. So this is basically just saying like, hey, these are all the unstaged changes or the changes that you haven't committed to the repository. And so basically, if you were to delete the file, you would lose these changes. And it tries to highlight it for you and say, hey, like you deleted this, but then you added this, which is identical. So you probably just put in like a new line break, right? Yeah, probably. Hey, you added this and you added this. Some of it's commented. Oh, no. Um, but yeah, so super nice. I'm not going to say I use Git GUI a ton just because all of the features that are pretty much in here are going to be in VS Code. So now if I open up VS Code, I should see that my source control pane now picks up that Git's been installed. <gasps> hey, it changed. And I can see everything. And again, I'm being prompted for stuff. But now I can see all the same stuff like before. So this is a really important pane because uh, things like this, for example, you notice how it's all, all these little plus lines and it's all kind of lit up. I'll put it on something a little bit easier, I think, to kind of notice the difference. I think dark mode, it makes it green. So it's like, hey, this is all code that's been added. So it's all been added for you, but it hasn't been committed to the repository. So this is code that I've been working on. And again, just adding it as I get time here and there, but really important. So then you know, you can do things like explore your code and this is what we call working tree. So you can compare it. So this was the old file. This is the new file. You can see I've added this section because it wasn't there before. I think on the light theme, you'll see it a little bit easier too. Yeah, so it's kind of green and everything like that. So really important tool. You're going to be using it a lot and then we'll show you how to uh, stage your changes, commit your changes, and then push your changes. But at this point, we got the two applications that we needed installed, installed. So if you do have any questions about installing GitHub, sorry, not GitHub, Git Bash, sorry, not Git Bash, Git and Visual Studio Code, feel free to put those questions down in the comments below. Um, you know, hopefully I can help you through it if you're running into issue or maybe if other people, they might uh, know how to walk you through some of those issues as well. Don't be too upset if you don't, if you feel like it's still a lot, like, oh, I don't know how to use this tool. We'll get there. We kind of have to just take it in steps. One of those things, it's like, I can talk a lot about it, but until you're actually using it, it's just one of those things, like it's not going to make a ton of sense until you're using it. So again, if you have questions, put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you in video number four.